I've been asked to put together a promo for my podcast, Fuel, the new business show, and I'm the host of Smith called Keith. With the Marketing Podcast Network, you're guaranteed to hear wonderful marketing-related shows every time like this one and like mine. So if you're interested in finding out how experts in the creative sector generate business for their companies, then give the Fuel Podcast a listen. It's packed full of hints, tips, tricks, and anecdotes from the best at winning new business around the world. So come and join the Mad Men. On this episode of Winfluence. There's this hidden gem that people aren't getting. I just don't think everyone has completely understood the full power of a podcast interview, especially as I'm relating it to how people would spend marketing dollars otherwise. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Did you know that 41% of Americans 12 and older have listened to a podcast in the last month? 26% have listened in the last week. That's 74 million people. And of the people who listen each week, they average hearing eight podcasts in a week. All that information is from The Infinite Dial. It is the annual social media and audio listening habits research provided by Edison Research. I mark my calendar each March to get the latest download. It's easy to be bullish about podcasting when you're a podcaster. But if 74 million people listen each week, that means over 200 million people in the U.S. alone do not. So there's room to grow, not just in listenership, but in understanding of why podcasts matter. They matter to businesses and content creators because they are an easy platform to build authority and trust upon. And you don't have to start a podcast to build it. You can simply be a guest on one. Spencer Carpenter saw the advantages and opportunities for businesses and creators at the onset of the pandemic. He spent 15 years in the music business but saw podcasts as an opportunity to communicate in a world where communication was changing. He founded Outlier Audio to help businesses and brands, including content creators, take advantage of podcasts. Outlier Audio can not only pitch you to be a guest on relevant podcasts that help build your brand and trust in the community, but they'll also help you build a podcast of your own if that suits you better. Spencer joined me recently to talk about the challenges some businesses have with understanding the power of podcasts the opportunity and advantages they bring, and who is right and maybe not right for podcasting. We'll hear from him and learn more to help you with the pods today on Winfluence. Now, this is the point in the show where I tell you a little about Tagger, our presenting sponsor. It is a complete influencer marketing software package I use every day to find, engage, hire, collaborate, review, and measure all my influence marketing efforts. I've started a new campaign for a client in Tagger this week and am finally building out a full campaign management project within the tool using all of Tagger's capabilities. I normally still do the emails and approvals and such outside the platform, but this campaign is more of a scaled project with dozens of creators, so I'm leaning more on Tagger. So I set up the campaign, and in 10 minutes, I have a campaign brief, an invitation email for creators, the triggered responses if they apply, an expected content flow that automatically gives me a checklist per creator to ensure they fulfill the campaign obligations. It's kind of crazy how organized and useful this software is. Now, I could go on, but you know I use Tagger every day. You should check it out, too. It might be right for your brand or agency. Go to jason.online slash tagger to get a free demo and see if tagger is right for you. That's all I'm asking you to do. Go do a demo. Worst case scenario, you get to see really cool software in action. Jason.online slash tagger. Go there, sign up, do the demo. Jason.online slash tagger. We're going to get you lathered up and booked on podcasts to build more trust and authority for you. Spencer Carpenter from Outlier Audio is next. On Winfluence, LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. 
a platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before, because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Spencer, the world of podcasts just keeps expanding and getting bigger by the day, yet there are still people out there, surprisingly enough, who either don't understand what podcasts are or don't quite understand why they should care. When you run into someone who's less informed about the power of podcasts, either having one of your own or just sourcing podcasts to be a guest and get the word out there about what you're doing, what do you say to someone who just doesn't get it? Well, the people that don't understand are obviously maybe not obviously, but are more likely going to be a little bit older. And so I like to relate it back to Howard Stern and audiobooks. Yeah. And so the thing that podcasting allows people to do is take the entertainment and the liveliness that comes from something like Howard Stern, which was not necessarily just because it's a long form radio, but also because there's the freedom to kind of do what you want. And then mix it with the learning that comes from audiobooks. Now, obviously, some shows are more pop culture. Some are based around true crime. But at least as I fell upon podcasts, it was a way to learn in the car without having to listen to the most boring Think and Grow Rich recording I've ever tried to listen to for the 10th time in a row. Couldn't finish the book multiple times. Couldn't finish the audiobook multiple times. And I love the concepts. But that was what really made me made it stick out to me. And then obviously, it's in a streaming platform, which means you can use it whenever you want. So it gives you the freedom that radio does not. Yeah. And so when you combine those three things together, then people really seem to understand, okay, I get why podcasts are a thing, why they're important, and why they're taking off right now. Well, and just to hit on some of the highlight stats for those listening out there, according to the Infinite Dial, which is the annual research report from Edison Research, which... This year was also supported by Wondery and Art19. The 2022 numbers are these. 62% of Americans 12 and older have listened to a podcast. 41% listen monthly. 26% have listened in the last week. That's 74 million people. And that's from a survey earlier in the year. So most certainly that has gone up. And now in 2022, weekly podcast listeners listen to eight podcasts per week. So... I guess my question back to you now is, is business foolish not to pay attention to this medium? I mean, look, if what you're doing works, then great. But it's foolish not to look into it and see where it can go. What people don't understand about podcast, and it's not that it's not that there's this hidden gem that people aren't getting. I just don't think everyone has completely understood the full power of mm -hmm. a podcast interview. And especially as I'm relating it to how people would spend marketing dollars otherwise. Right now, what might be the new thing for someone that's older that doesn't understand is just like getting into Facebook ads and Instagram ads. But any type of marketing you do, it's only happening as long as you're paying for it. And most of the time, it's disruptive. So it's hoping to, you have to first create content, whatever that content is. You then have to hope that you grab someone's attention scrolling through Instagram, keep their attention, get them to go to your website, and then convert. And that's a lot of steps. <laughs> Whereas a podcast listener, if you're on someone's podcast and they already have a listenership, those people are volunteering to listen. Yep. And it's not just for the 30 to 60 seconds that you hope to get them on that piece of content. They're volunteering to listen to 25 or 30 or 45 or 60 minutes. And that's a long time to be building a rapport. Mm -hmm. And you take it one step further, it's a no pitch scenario. And what I mean by that is you're not trying to sell them anything. You're giving them information. You're adding value. You're explaining to them your story, why you're passionate about what you do or the service you provide or whatever it might be. But you know, I don't know about you. I could sign up for a sales call knowing someone's going to be selling to me. Mm -hmm. I'm still not comfortable in that position personally. <laughs> I don't like feeling like I'm being sold to. 
I don't feel like I'm being manipulated in some way to take my cash and put it in their pocket. It, you know, even if they say something like, you know, I like you, I think I'm gonna, I want to give you this discount to try and make it happen. That's great. But my immediate thought is, do you just offer that to everybody? It's so cynical of me, but I can only use my perspective and I don't like being sold. And so what I like about podcasts is that, I mean, I'm sure there's some out there that use their platform as an infomercial, but most are not. It is a no pitch scenario where you get to hear the person's story. You can hear their personality. You can even hear a smile in their voice as they're telling a joke or laughing. These things are all really important building rapport with someone, a listener that could be your potential client that doesn't know you. And then if they actually decide to reach out, while it's a cold lead to you, it's really a hot lead because they already know you. They already like you. They just now need to know your pricing and how it works. Yeah, that's a great point. And I did a panel at Startup Week in Louisville yesterday uh, as we're recording this, and someone asked me about why podcasting is so powerful. And my answer was the intimacy, which you touched on there. It's as simple as if you watch a YouTube video or some other type of multimedia presentation out there, um, you're typically going to be watching and listening to someone who's trying to, you know, get excited about blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, blah. Well, in a podcast, we're just having a conversation. So it's much more real. It's much more close. And if you know how to manipulate and use the microphone, if you're either the guest or if you're the host, you can even make it really intimate and get right <laughs> down close to the microphone. And it's like the person listening is sitting right beside you. It's very powerful to just use the environment that you're in to transmit that kind of intimacy, which makes it much, much more powerful than other mediums. Absolutely. So, you know, Tom Webster, the man behind that infinite dial research until he left for Sounds Profitable earlier this year, had a nice point to make on the Sounds Profitable podcast, which I listened to pretty religiously this week. He pointed out that it's harder to sell podcasting to some people because they think podcasts don't have anything to offer. They can't get from what they already listen to, which is like AM, FM radio or other audio sources. So I wonder if the challenge that we have is to simply show non-believers the wide variety of things that they can get from podcasts that they can't get elsewhere, or if we just need to wait for AM, FM radios to die out. But that's even a misnomer, too, because some of the biggest players in the podcast industry are the big media companies that own the AM, FM radio mm-hmm, stations. Mm-hmm. You know, the iHearts of the world are big into podcasts because they see consumer habits shifting, and if they don't change, they'll die. So, and they certainly don't want to do that. Now, I want to get into what you do at Outlier Audio, but before we get there, how'd you get into this mess? Give me a little bit more of your journey to owning a podcast company. Yeah, so I was in the music industry for 15 years. I started off booking concerts in my hometown because my cousins wouldn't let me into their band, <laughs> and but I wanted to be involved. And I then scaled that up to doing multi-day music conferences and festivals as I got into college. I ran a couple of record labels. I did tour booking. I did artist management. I pretty much did everything except be the talent. And I was always working on either side of talent representation. And when COVID hit, I recognized this wasn't just affecting live performers. It was also affecting anybody that required things like in-person meetups or conferences or expos as a way to drive networking and sales. And I also, from listening to podcasts, I realized there are a lot of people out there with these nuggets of information. And not everybody can be a celebrity entrepreneur like Mark Cuban that can probably put, you know, the biggest PR company on retainer or, you know, maybe someone not at his level, but can dedicate the resources to someone doing outreach. There are a lot of really successful people that are busy building their business and they don't have the resources to devote to something like that or they don't have the know-how. So I wanted to be able to help those people that have good knowledge. I mean, not everyone has to be the most successful person in the world to be on a podcast. If you get paid because you do something well, just even in your town, maybe mm-hmm. in your state, in your it, maybe just within your company, you're the best within your company, you can be on a podcast. That means you have knowledge that other people don't have. Yeah. And so that was why I wanted to get started with this. So there's only a few other companies that do what I do. And I've they seem to be more focused on uh, like authors or people with a course coming out or some sort of keynote speaker they can put on retainer. Whereas I've helped people with their book tours and I do have keynote speakers, but I will also take just a run-of-the-mill financial planner and get them some interviews that are good for content, for SEO, where they can still be a subject matter expert talk, speaking on a show about what they do. So that, that was kind of how this came about. 
That's awesome. We're talking to Spencer Carpenter of Outlier Audio. When we come back, we'll find out a little bit more about the company and how you too can get booked on podcasts. Stay tuned. How can you change the world, build a company, or establish an industry if no one knows you exist? Marketing makes you exist. The Space Marketing Podcast is where we explore marketing principles, strategies, and tactics through the lens of space. Join me, Izzy House, as we talk with industry professionals about their challenges and successes with marketing in the new space economy. Subscribe at spacemarketingpodcast.com or look for the Space Marketing Podcast wherever you listen. Back on Winfluence, talking to Spencer Carpenter. He's the founder and, I guess, CEO, president, compadre, person in charge at Outlier Audio, which is a podcast company and service that plugs you into podcasts. Now, we've been talking a little bit about how he can plug you into other people's podcasts or actually your own. So, Spencer, give us the full gamut of what Outlier Audio does. What does all that mean for people out there who might need you? Sure. So while we do offer people the ability to help them start a podcast, which is a great way to either engage the audience you already have to help build an audience, present you as a thought leader or industry leader, it gives you the opportunity to drive your own conversation. That is something we do help people with is starting their own podcast. But a lot of what we do is getting people booked on other podcasts. And that's a great place to start because it doesn't require our clients to build the infrastructure around having their own podcast. It doesn't require that commitment, whether it be the recording time or the social media side of it. It's easier to go be on someone else's podcast than to start your own. And so that's what we help people with the most. And so, you know, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and business professionals and investors, people that are either raising money or have a product coming out, or they just really need to establish themselves in a way where they can stand out from their competition. Or just, I mean, for some people, it's just, this is a great way to produce content without hiring a video team to come and do videos with them all the time. It's a great way to produce content without building a course, great way to get SEO without responding to one of those weird cold (laughs) outreach companies that are hitting them up in their email about SEO. You know, there's a lot of benefits for podcasts, but it's just a great way for them to get out there to have some unique marketing material that a lot of other people, especially their peers, usually aren't having. That's true. And I would also add to that, there's a lot of creators out there, influencers, if you will, listen to this show too. And for those of you who don't have a podcast, but want to promote yourself to a bigger audience and grow your audience, man, being a guest on a podcast is like super easy. That should be something that you want to do because it's, again, as Spencer said, way easier than starting your own. Although I would certainly encourage content creators who have any talent or skill or interest in creating content, creating a podcast is not all that hard. You should actually look into that too, but at least pitching yourself or having someone like Spencer help pitch you for other podcasts is super smart. Spencer, I love the fact that your website kind of underlines the fact that what you're selling is authority. Tell us more about how appearing on podcasts builds that for a business owner, a creator, or a business itself. Sure. I mean, well, I like to look at the example of these careers that a lot of people get, maybe just because they kind of fell into it. So look at someone like maybe a realtor. There are a lot of realtors that did not have a passion for real estate or sales. Maybe they just kind of fell into it and they, they realized that they liked it or they're a little bit good at it. But there are lots of realtors. I mean, I live in a small town. There's still lots of realtors in a small town, let alone a big city. There's not a ton of occupations where even a small town has a ton of them. So one way you can stand out and just be that person that is clearly standing out above their peers is to be that person that's peers to be getting invites onto podcasts. Not, I'm not saying that as if they're not getting the invitation, but I mean, you can reach out and solicit and get the invitation. And if you're doing that regularly, that adds a massive amount of credibility to the people that are paying attention. And I look at it like this. If you're on a podcast and then, you know, you post it to your LinkedIn or your email list, that's great. You're reaffirming to your current clients that they made the right decision, that you're the leader. But there are lots of people that maybe had an introduction call or consulting call that didn't convert, but they're always paying attention. Or maybe they're not even trying to pay attention. They just connected with that person on LinkedIn and forgot. 
then if they see that type of authority being built and that this person they did connect with one time is a leader in their space, maybe that's what is needed to push them over the fence. That's just one example. And again, I'm using something that where there is a lot of competition there in that industry. The other thing is about podcasts is there's lots of niches. There are podcasts for dog groomers. There's only about 20 of them. And I think last I checked, about 40 of them were defunct. But <laughs> if you're trying to build anything in the dog grooming space that's on a national level, you want to be on every single one of those other 12 podcasts if you can, because that's all there is. And so it's one of those things where people love the opportunity to go and speak in front of an audience if they can, because it's a little bit of an ego stroke and it adds credibility. But you can speak to way more people just being on a podcast from your office or by being on several smaller, low-hanging fruit podcasts, you could still outnumber what you would have gotten speaking to an audience in person. Absolutely. Now, this may come as a shock to those of you listening, but I have a podcast. I can attest that there are dozens of what I would call podcast pitching services, which is essentially that base part of what Outlier does. But so many of the other people who might be your competition these days are basically PR firms with a makeover. They mass email hundreds of podcasters pitching a client as a guest, and there's typically little to no consideration in there for relevance. I keep getting pitched experts on growth hacking and entrepreneurship and business investing and venture capital and even real estate. None of these topics fit really what Winfluence talks about very well, and that kind of pitch makes zero sense to me. So I wonder as you're doing this, how do you account for that when you have to hit either a certain number of pitches or whatever for your clients? How do you account for making sure that you're dialing it in and they're super relevant because your competition's not doing a very good job of that? <laughs> well, this isn't a service where someone just pays on the website and they submit some info. You know, I do an onboarding call. I really get to, I even ask people for information in advance, but I still want the call. Because I'm going to learn more than what they just decided to type out. The little nuance about what they do or their motivation or how they got started, all these things play into developing the story that I create for the host. And I mean, I'll be frank, I have definitely missed the mark when pitching to some people before. But I had a conversation with a woman at a podcast movement the other day. She said, I don't really like these podcast booking agents because they send me people that don't make sense for my show. Mm -hmm. And her show was about overcoming past trauma and mm -hmm. grief and that sort of thing. But in the name of the show was the word grit. Uh -huh. And I said to her, if you were to tell me the name of that show without giving me an explanation, I would think that's like a sales show yep. or a show about mindset or entrepreneurship. And obviously it's on the person pitching to do their research. And part of the what you asked, how do I make sure that I can deliver when I have maybe an X amount of podcasts? It is about the numbers. I mean, I have a lot of relationships at this point, but two years ago, I had to send out a hundred emails to get five. Yeah, And I actually spent the first month of this business going through thousands of shows and cataloging them and giving them a category as well as a subcategory and making notes so that I at least did everything I could to make sure I was reaching out to the right people. And even then, you know, I can reach out to the right people and still not get a response because they just don't need me or they didn't see it or they're getting hundreds of other responses each week. I mean, there's a lot of variables here. So quite honestly, I give myself a little bit of grace if I accidentally reach out to someone and it's not a fit. I obviously apologize. I do my best, but that doesn't happen that often. Sure. But these tools are great if you use something like Podmatch, which I recommend to everybody. Before anybody goes to me or comes to me, go check out Podmatch. It's a way for you to create a profile and be matched with shows that are actively looking for guests. So you already know that they're looking for you. You're not impeding on them by reaching out. If you're looking to do a little bit more of advanced outreach, you can look at PodcastWise. And that's a place where a catalog shows that can give you their contact email, gives you some information on the show, and you can create lists on it. But when you're searching for the show, it does give a description, and you can search based on keywords. So whenever I'm making a list, I do a scan of the entire description. I make sure that they mention some of the words I'm looking for. I make sure that it's not a show that maybe just has the same keyword and is something unrelated because that does show up in the list. And so that's one of the biggest time sucks of this job is how much time I spend going in and making sure that the shows I'm pitching are relevant, at least to the best of my ability. Yeah. There are plenty of hosts that are like, yeah, this isn't a fit. Like, 
this isn't what I cover. I'm like, I'm sorry, based on these other indicators, I thought it was. Again, it doesn't happen that often anymore, but there's lots of shows. And I've also concluded, I don't know what a host wants at any given time. I have some cool clients that are unique. And I've had people say, this isn't what I normally cover, but I like the person you pitch, so I'm going to have them on. Yeah. Well, and it's not really all that different, I don't think, from when I'm trying to identify the right influencers for a brand campaign. I do as much research as I can to kind of nail down and know that when I reach out to an influencer or I recommend an influencer to a brand, that it's as good a fit as possible. The one thing you cannot scale with that, that you can't scale with the the podcast outreach is making sure that you're doing as granular a research as you can. That You can only go so far. And so when you have the, you know, the powers against you of time and deadlines and scale, you have to be able to be efficient. But the fact that you are at least conscious and aware of it and constantly taking steps to make sure that you're as refined and that five out of 100 goes to 15 out of 100 goes to 20 out of 100 goes to 30 out of 100, et cetera, is a really good sign. So you talked a little bit about the two or three things people need to do to kind of you know start the process of getting onto shows. Are there any people out there who should think twice about wanting to be on podcasts? Anybody that's just not a good fit? If you truly don't feel that you have anything unique to add to the conversation, I wouldn't. I've only had one client that like in my onboarding form or my onboarding call, I said to them like, you know, as a financial planner, which financial planners are regulated. The mostly all do the same thing. So that in itself is like a mental exercise for me to try and get them to like what makes you unique. But I take their word on it. Sell me the same way you'd sell a client. I can use that. But I I said to this person, you know, what is it you do that's different? And he was just like, well, I don't do anything different. (laughs) I'm like, come on, man, you need to give me more than that. And he's like, no, I don't do anything different. And on top of that, he was a financial planner that primarily only worked with people that were already retired. So he didn't even get them Hmm. to the point of having wealth. So that person in particular was like, I don't think you should be doing these. But most other people, again, I come back to if you get paid to do something, you have general knowledge that other people don't. Even though most financial planners do a lot of the same thing, their information is really valuable, which is why they're highly paid professionals. It's just not everybody wants to go pay 500 bucks an hour for that information. But if you can get on a podcast and give them some advice and tell them what you do, then they might be willing to now understand why they should come to you. And so... Some people I know are iffy about it if they're an introvert. I actually combat that and say, this is just a one-on-one conversation. If you can have a one-on-one conversation, you can be on podcasts. It's not live. There are plenty of shows that will edit out things. If you tell them in advance that you're going to be a little bit shy, you might stumble. You'd prefer if they could edit some of the stuff out. They're going to like accommodate you like 95% of the time. And the other 5%, they're just like, we just really want organic conversations the guests will understand if you stumble over your words. So from that perspective, I think everybody can really be on a podcast if they have just some sort of unique perspective to offer. You don't have to reinvent the wheel with your strategies or your topics. It's just a unique or nuanced perspective is always helpful. Nice. All right. So that's someone, you know, wants to be a guest on a podcast. Let's take it a step further. I'm interested in starting a podcast What do I need to do to start doing or at least thinking about getting started with having my own podcast? And what's the difference really between someone who's a great fit to be a guest versus someone who's a great fit to actually have their own? If off the bat, you don't have any real direction on how you get started on a podcast, you just believe you want to have one, you should consult with a company that can help you with that direction. Only because, I mean, you can go and record a podcast and put it out very easily. That's one of the great things about it is it's a low barrier to entry. But if you're doing it to represent your brand or your business, you do want to have at least some sense of direction and legitimacy behind it. You know, making sure that if you're going to be putting this out, you're also promoting it through your social media in some way with graphics. You know, making sure that you have a section on your website that accurately shows that you have this. That's going to help your SEO. So if you don't know where to start at all, consult with a company. But if you have a little bit of an idea, you have some infrastructure and assistant that can help you. Start by figuring out who is your clientele? Who do you want to speak to? You might be, going back to the idea of a financial planner, you maybe don't want to have a podcast that's focused on financial planning. But if your clientele are dentists, maybe you want to have a podcast that interviews dentists. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and about how dentists are able to, because they're high net worth earners, are able to live the happy, healthy, successful life. And that is getting in dentists that could potentially be your clientele. So the next step is figuring out who is it you want to speak to? Who is it that is, or it's even the crossover. Maybe it's not you're interviewing dentists, but you're interviewing the lawyers that help dentists, the insurance agents, these people that can refer dentists to you as your clientele. So anybody that is going to be that crossover in your network or is going to be able to drive traffic could be your ideal guest or listener. And so developing your podcast around that is going to help people get really far. Awesome. Well, and I know Outlier is there to help folks on either front, getting booked or starting their own show. So how do people learn more about you and find you on the interwebs? Yeah, just reach out to us at www.outlieraudio.com. You can also follow me on Instagram, which is just my name, at Spencer Carpenter. There's also at Outlier Audio. You can have me on LinkedIn. And I'm sure Jason will add all of these links to the show notes. Absolutely will. Awesome stuff. Spencer, thanks for the conversation and wisdom today. Keep riding that wave, man. I'm glad we got folks like you to help us with all this stuff. Thank you so much, Jason. Great chat with Spencer. A bit of disclosure, by the way, Outlier Audio is a former sponsor of the Marketing Podcast Network, which I run and on which Winfluence is heard. But I invited Spencer to come on to share what you now know is his useful wisdom about the space. Go check him and them out at outlieraudio.com. Speaking of checking out, I need your help getting more people to check out Winfluence. Tell someone who might want to know more about Influence Marketing about this podcast. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them. You can also make a future episode of Winfluence awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using that recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners. The technical production is by podcasting360.com. Winfluence airs along the Marketing Podcast Network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hey, yeah, you. I hope you're enjoying this great show on the Marketing Podcast Network. I have another show you might like, also on NPN. It's called Entrepreneurs Enigma. Every week, I talk to entrepreneurs and founders of companies of all sizes about their journeys in the entrepreneurship realm. Subscribe in your favorite podcast player and tune in every week for a new episode right here on the Marketing Podcast Network.